Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor, on a mission to become the world's greatest tutor. In today's video, we're going to be talking about series versus parallel when it comes to circuits. A lot of my students get confused by this, so let's talk about it. First, let's just get one thing clear. What does series and parallel look like? So one of my favorite questions to ask my students at the beginning of circuits is I draw a circuit that looks like this. I've got my battery here, which I'll call VS. I have resistor R1, and I have resistor R2. And then I ask my students, are these resistors in series, or are they in parallel? And about half of them say series, half of them say parallel. The correct answer is series. Just because these resistors are literally in parallel, like I mean parallel lines back in algebra, yes, they do look parallel, I agree with that. But that's not what series and parallel means in circuits. Series really means one road. In other words, if I'm an electron coming out of the positive terminal of the battery, going through this path, as you can see, there's only one path for me to take. Whenever there's one path, that means series. Series means one path. And then conversely, if I wanted to draw parallel, this is an example of parallel. Not just because the resistors are literally parallel to each other, I don't care about that. Parallel means more than one road I can go down. So again, if I'm the electron traveling down this path, I get right here, I see there's a fork in the road. I can take the blue path through R1, or I can take the green path through R2, and then eventually they meet up over here, and then it's kind of the red path again, actually. So again, this is an example of parallel because I have multiple roads I can go down. The first example was series. And then this last example I'll draw is an example of both parallel and series in the same problem. So as you can see, this is not an overly complicated circuit, three resistors. This is a combination of series and parallel. And the way typically we deal with it I would say R2 and R3 are in parallel first, and then after that, I would say R1 is in series. But the order is important. R2 and R3 being in parallel first means I would combine them first, and then I would just combine them to form this resistor, which I would probably call R2, 3, because I combined resistors two and three. Now R1 and resistor two, three, are in series with each other. The order matters. Whoops, I accidentally erased R1. There we go. And so now I wanna make a little T-chart for us for series versus parallel. What does it mean if the resistors are in series or parallel? So for series, I like to say that the current is the same. In other words, if I have two resistors or three resistors in series, or even if I draw it going at a right angle, the current going through the resistors will always be the same if they're in series. And remember, series means one road. I also say the voltage is split. In other words, the total voltage, 10 volts, 20 volts, the battery, whatever, is gonna be split up among our resistors in series. So for instance, if the total voltage is 10 volts, maybe it's split up like six volts here, four volts here. It could be five volts and five volts, any combination could potentially happen. You'd actually calculate that with Ohm's law, which I'll talk about in a second. And then lastly, if I wanna combine these resistors, then the total resistance is just R1 plus R2. Or if you have more than two resistors, you know, plus R3, you just do that for however many resistors you have. Very easy for series. For parallel, it's literally the exact opposite. The current is gonna be split up and so that means if I have, for instance, these two resistors, which are in parallel, maybe the left one has two amps, maybe the right one has four amps of current. The voltage is gonna be the same. And this is the part that really confuses my students when I tell them. But if this circuit is connected to a battery, and that battery's 10 volts, I'm not saying that they get the same voltage, five volts, five volts for a total of 10. No, I am not saying that. I am saying they both get the full 10 volts. The analogy I like to use, it's not a good analogy, I know that, but I like to use it anyway, is imagine I have a cookie and I see two resistors in parallel who both want the cookie. So I split the cookie in half 
and then I give both resistors the full cookie. I know it doesn't make any sense, but that's the analogy I like to use, and my students usually remember it, so good enough for me. If you correct me in the comments and say, that's a bad analogy, you should do this instead, I will just ignore you. And then for our total, this is actually really different, it's going to be quantity 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus however many resistors you have on the denominator, end parenthesis to the negative 1 power. This is one way of writing it. Another way you'll see it written is R total, or 1 over R total, is 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus however many resistors, but there's no negative 1 power. But you still have to remember that that R total's in the denominator, which means you have to take the reciprocal, and reciprocal is the same thing as the negative 1 power. Let me say it more simply now. Yes, I have two equations that get me the same answer. I like to use the top one personally because it's less steps. I can just do this in one step in my calculator. The bottom one is also true, and you'll see it in a lot of textbooks. So whichever way you feel more comfortable with doesn't matter to me. Just know that these are the rules for series, and these are the rules for parallel. And then this all ties in with Ohm's law, V equals I times R, voltage equals current times resistance. Now here's another quiz question I love asking my students. If I have this circuit that has three resistors and the battery, how many Ohm's law equations can I make? Think about it for a second. Think about the answer. And now I'll tell you. If you said three, you're close, but you're wrong. The answer is at minimum four. I can have an Ohm's law for each resistor individually. If I did it for R2, for instance, it would be voltage two equals current two times resistor two. This is the voltage in resistor two. It is not the voltage in the battery. In other words, I don't know V2. The current I2, I don't know that either. I'm usually given R2. In other words, I can't solve anything yet, but this is what Ohm's law would look like for that resistor specifically. And yes, I can do that for R1 and R3 as well. I can also have a fourth Ohm's law, not for the battery, absolutely not. Batteries do not have resistance, although they do have internal resistance, but that's a story for another day. Never use Ohm's law for a battery. But what you can do is you can use Ohm's law for the whole circuit. And when you wanna do Ohm's law for the whole circuit, Typically what I write is V battery equals current battery times R total. In other words, yes, I am looking at the voltage in the battery. I'm looking at the current going through the battery, but the resistance is the total resistance. In this case, because R1, R2, and R3 are all in series, I would say R total would just be R1 plus R2 plus R3. And since usually I'm given the voltage in the battery, you can make up a number, 10 volts, I don't care. I still do not know the current at all. And usually I'm given the resistors, let's just make up numbers, two ohms, three ohms, and five ohms, for therefore a total of two plus three plus five, 10 ohms. And then I can easily find the current going through the battery, which would just be the voltage, 10 volts, divided by the total resistance, 10 ohms, the current going through the battery is one amp, which I can then draw on my circuit. And remember, since these resistors are all in series, because it's one path, it's all gonna have the same current, one amp, going through every resistor. Yes, I can then plug in the one amp right there. Again, if I know resistor two was, I said earlier, three, I can find voltage two as one times three, three volts. And yes, you can do that for the other resistors as well. So that's an example of how I'm using Ohm's law and how I'm using these rules for series and parallel to help me solve circuits. Let me just talk about one more thing real quick and then we'll end the video. If I have that example I said earlier where we have a combination of series and parallel, I'll give you numbers. I'm not gonna solve it really. I'm just gonna introduce the problem. But if you want to, you can mess around with the circuit. You can find all the currents. You can find all the voltages. I don't care. I just wanna explain the strategy. The first thing I do when I have a combination of series and parallel, you're always gonna see me combine resistors. 
In this case, I'm doing the parallel first because I have to. The series comes next in this particular orientation. So I'd combine these resistors using the math. R total equals 1 over 10 plus 1 over 15. That quantity to the negative first power. I have my calculator so I can do this easily. And I'll get 6 ohms. And then what you're going to see me do is you're going to see me redraw the circuit. I am not updating the first picture. I am drawing a new picture. And yes, this could require a lot of paper. And this circuit still has the 15 volts, the 20 ohms up here, and now the 6 ohms here. And now I would combine the 20 and the 6 in series. And that's easy math. 20 plus 6 equals 26 ohms. We love resistors in series. And now I draw the circuit one more time with one resistor. Doesn't matter where you draw it. You can draw it in this position or this position. It does not matter at all. That's 15 volts. Now that's 26 ohms. And now that you have the total resistance, you can find the current very easily. Voltage in the battery equals current through the battery times the total resistance, 26. I'd get a current of 0.577 amps or 577 milliamps, if you like that more. And just so you know, that is the current going through this whole circuit, but this is not the original circuit, is it? If I look back at the original circuit, the only thing that's 0.577 is this portion right here. Also, it's going to be this portion down here because that's still the same road. As a matter of fact, the only part that's not 0.577 amps is where I get split up down these two paths on the right. I don't know these currents. I do want you to try and find it on your own now, if you so desire. Post your answer in the comments. But just to recap, all I did was I combined these two resistors in parallel, then I combined these two resistors in series, and then I did Ohm's Law to find the total current in the circuit, and now I'm almost done solving. I can use Ohm's Law to find the voltage in that resistor. I already know the current going through that resistor. Once you find the voltage here, you can then use that information to find the voltage here. And the reason why is I'm going to make up a number. Let's say that's 5 volts right here. Well, if you have 15 volts to start out with, you spent 5, you have 10 volts left. And remember, since these are in parallel, they both get this full 10 volts right here. So I know the voltage in both of these resistors. Again, I made up these numbers, so don't trust me on that. But that's how I'd solve it. And so hopefully that all made sense. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please comment below. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.